to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner, and we are back for another episode of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. And this is season five, episode nine, and it is called Revenge is Best. Hold on. Revenge is Best. Sorry. Una momento. I'm looking to see what it's called. I'll have to look another time, but it's re I saw this Revenge is Best. I literally just got done watching the show, so bear with me on this. But it was a super-sized episode, and child, these girls are on fire, and this show was on fire, and not the husbands continuing to be involved, um, but this is probably the last we're going to see of that because, um, as we know, um, we continue where we left off where they're still in the um, Bronwyn's couples trip. Um, and basically John just, just talked to Lisa, say, Hey, you got to figure it out with Bronwyn or else we're getting kicked out basically, which is what's happening. And what I will say, um, prior to this episode, I had one thought about how Todd handled it. And towards the end, child, my friends are right. My friends are right. Shout out to you, AJ and Tyler. Y'all know who you are. Um, my besties. We were literally talking about this show. We actually went on a whole spiel about it because we're actually might may may or may not have a pod may or may not come up with a podcast when it comes to this. We'll see. But like, um, we were talking about everything and uh, everything and all that's housewives. And yeah, AJ was right about it, and I was wrong. I didn't see it. And after this episode, I was like, oh, oh. Oh, okay, interesting. So we'll get into that, but we're learning more about everyone on this trip. And one appearance that was not missed, actually two appearances that weren't missed, technically three. Melly, I don't know what happened to her, that friend of, uh, I, 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 I guess she's a no-go um, because I forget that she's even on this show. And then um, Brittany... Don't, don't miss her. And, um, Heather. Heather was not on this episode at all, and she was not missed. And, honestly, it is, um, showing a narrative a little bit more when it comes to the show. I'm not sure if Heather's needed on this show. I'll be honest. I know a lot of y'all love her, or did love her because of, um, her talking about the Mormon stuff of it all. But, like... Y'all can find someone else that has the Mormon knowledge. I'm sorry. Like, that's great. And that what that is partially what makes this um, franchise so unique because it's very religious space. But, child, she's not the only one there that is like, you know, has a more Mormon background. So we don't necessarily need her on the show. Uh, but anyway, um, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the actual review itself. Um, again, we continue where we left off where John tells Lisa, hey, we need to figure things out or else we need to leave. And so then they fast forward and have this lunch. Um, not that not that much further from after everything happened. And they're having the lunch and it is awkward as, as hell. Super awkward. Because... Pretty much everyone has a problem with Lisa at, at this table, um, one way or another. Um, and not necessarily everyone. I know I'm being a little dramatic because clearly Meredith doesn't have an issue with her. But like everyone else. So, I mean, yeah. Meredith's the only one that doesn't have an issue with <laughs> with um, Lisa. So, we first start where Lisa and Bronwyn were going to continue having a conversation. And then it kind of got derailed because... Everyone else's grievances came up, came up. So the first person whose grievances came up was um, Whitney and her. And so they got back to this whole thing about the rumors and the Alibaba of it all. And um, so John intervenes. He's like, because they're they're not getting anywhere. And so John. Barlow in the rings, he's like, okay, so can you just actually ask Lisa if you think if she did it? And then Lisa's like, no. Okay, solved. 
And then um, he's like, okay, now, um, Whitney, did you lie on Lisa? Whitney's like, no. Okay, that's it. We're done. It's dead. And Bronwyn, her confessional, was sending me. She's like, oh my gosh, all we need was just some men to save us from, from our drama? Okay, everything can wrap up now. And the shady producers fast forward to them being in, um, in, a, in a later scene and like the credits. And she's like, <laughs> I, I, and I'm going to hold you, crack me up. So after that, then um, Steve, jeez, I think his name is Steve. Um, I'm sorry, Angie's husband. I think his name is Steve. I'm not 100% sure, but Angie's husband chimed in and he's like, I didn't, well, you called her a B and I don't like how you treated her. And Lisa actually did apologize to, end up apologizing to Angie. Is like, I'm sorry if you felt a certain way, but we know nothing got resolved there because Lisa is still hanging on to what um, Heather said that Angie said about her parenting, which was not, was nothing. Um, a base, basically a case of 20 on 10. But anyway, that was resolved for the moment, at the moment. And, and then Seth chimes in and says something kind of weird. And they kind of cheers and table it. And that's it for that. And then from there, um, they do go on to get ready to play beach volleyball. Oh, yeah. Side note, Seth is still there. He did not leave. So, um, but... Seth is still going to cause issues later on in this episode and not necessarily because of not necessarily with Meredith, but just in general. So, okay. Um, from there, we actually have a brief scene where we do actually pan back to Mary in Salt Lake City. And this is again, it's hard to watch, super, super hard to watch because now we are at, um, Mary's in um, her son's room with her son and the wife. Um, and they're air quoting it, by the way, for those who are not aware, because it came out later on, they're not actually really married. Thank God. Um, so the, the room is a mess. And I even noticed, and hopefully, and I hope, I, I'm kind of, I kind of feel bad I saw that. Towards the end of the scene, I noticed that Robert Jr. had something in his, in his hand and he immediately hit it. And so I'm going to hold you. I feel like they might have been using. Um, all they had was his snacks. They were eating in the bed and it's just kind of just gross. And um, the girlfriend just looks like a mess. Um, he looks out of it because he always looks out of it. And side note, for I know not everyone is aware and can, can't pick up on the cues of this because I actually found out talking to one of my friends that they thought it's because maybe he's on the spectrum he was acting this way. I was like, no, <laughs> he's on drugs. I mean, all the signs are pointing to it and Mary is alluding to it in a certain way because... I think at this moment, I can't tell if she knows or not yet all the way, but I think she just feels, it's it's really hard to watch because you don't know if she really knows or not, or she has a hint something's going on because even in her confessionals when she's describing it, it's like she is definitely where something isn't okay. Something's wrong and his behavior has completely changed as who he was before. Um, and... I will say this, maybe his behavior has changed since before the show. I don't know because I, just honestly, I just remember watching all the seasons and it just kind of always seemed like he was a little, you know, something was going on there, but it's just gotten substantially worse. It's like really, really hard to watch now. Like it's not what it was before. Um, but anyway, so she's trying to figure it out and you could tell her heart is broken and she's trying to do everything she can to like figure it out. 
Um, we do see in the mid-season trailer, she actually does confide in Angie about it. Um, because I, unfortunately, I don't think things get better. Um, and so, um, yeah. Anyway, so from there, we go back to um, Palm Springs. And <laughs> these producers are the best, by the way. Salt Lake City producers are the best, top none. They are, they just, they just, they're great. They're great. So they basically make it, make a spoof, a housewife spoof of them, of it being Top Gun. And it's like the beach volleyball scene. And cause most of the guys minus Todd have their shirts off and like they're, you know, basically it's an even amount of couples. So they're playing the game. I mean, they're playing beach volleyball and they're slow motion it and it's cracking me up. It is quite comical. Um, so that's kind of what happens there. And then from there, we go on to the next thing. Once they are done, um, basically with this, they are getting, they're going to get changed and get ready for dinner. And this is kind of like the big dinner that's celebrating like them as a, Bronwyn and Todd as a couple. And also this is where a, a lot of the mess unfortunately took place. Okay, so it is time for the dinner. Well, before it's time for the dinner, everyone's kind of getting ready. And John's talking to Lisa about how she feels about everything. She says she feels a lot better. She doesn't feel as isolated. And my whole thing when it comes to Lisa and this whole entire trip, and really this whole entire season, and really Lisa as a whole, I really wish she would stop being so freaking self-absorbed. It's like, honestly, this season is it's pretty, it's pretty insufferable. Um... I don't like how she tried so hard to sabotage this trip and make it about her. I feel like that's what she did. Um, and I feel like she does that in pretty much all situations. It's not just this trip. Like, if you notice anything that Lisa Barlow's part of, she makes it about her. And the only time where she doesn't make it about her is if she's with someone who she's intimidated by. Um, I'm surprised why she's not intimidated by Bronwyn so much. Because Bronwyn has been getting her together and keeping her foot on her neck multiple times, multiple ways. But maybe she's going to learn that that's not the person she needs to do that with. I'm not sure. But um, the other thing that I will say, too, is um, I, I don't know. I'm just kind of irritated by it. And towards the end of the episode, she makes it about her yet again. Like, she continues to do this the whole entire episode but at the same time i'm gonna hold you i am kind of glad that at the lunch and even at the dinner all the girls are probably like girl it is you it is you and meredith is kind of just staying back staying on mute like as she should because it's not really about her but anyway so before we get to the dinner so we're at the dinner now and um, it's a Mexican themed dinner and it's really cute. Like uh, Bronwyn has, Bronwyn and Todd, they have a mariachi band and she's wearing the diamond earring. She's wearing like the diamond um, necklace that the jeweler showed up with and she looks gorgeous. All the ladies for the most part um, look gorgeous. Lisa is the most dressed down of everyone, but she's still giving fashion for the most part not really I'm, I'm trying to be nice but no she, she was not dressed well um also for the men i don't know where seth thought he was going but he looked like he was about to, about to go go hunting he was not dressed for the occasion because it was very much clearly a formal type of a wear and formal attire and so he wasn't really dressed great either but all, everyone else pretty much showed up correctly for the occasion and so basically after, um, and then um, Todd and Bronwyn had some other friends there that are housewives. And I don't know if Bronwyn caught it. I think she just let it brush over. But like when Lisa came and greeted her, it's like, oh, you have other friends here? I found that very shady that she said that. And also too, I also found it very weird and very just kind of odd that she was just so overly friendly with Bronwyn 
at this point, but it's because she is, I feel like the reason why she was like that because she had the necklace on. And I'm just kind of like, oh, wow. Lisa, you're kind of looking like a social climber. But also, too, before everyone sits down, I also noticed another thing. Todd's talking to his friends that aren't the housewives, and they're talking about what people do. And he shades, he shades the crap out of Lisa when it comes to like the, their and their businesses. Says, yeah, it's mediocre tequila. I was like, wow. <laughs> so the other revelation that I find is that. I feel like even before the show, Todd did not like Lisa. I don't think it had anything to do with the show. I think he really just tolerated Lisa because of Bronwyn. And then once the whole situation with um, Lisa getting involved with Bronwyn's daughter's family and all that, Todd does, does not like Lisa. He doesn't. And it manifests itself later on in um, this scene. And it's very hard to watch. I'll just say that. Anyway, so from there, they actually finally go to sit down. And um, they're toasting. And um, they're also talking about... Um, so when they toast, they're talking about all these positive things about... Um, well, no, actually they're not. So what, <laughs> sorry, I, I'm, I'm trying to remember what happened. Um, what actually happened was that uh, Bronwyn is having this speech, like kind of like commensurating their relationship, um, her and, you know, Todd's relationship. And she's like kind of shading the crap out of them the whole entire time. And you can tell this interaction Bronwyn is so mad at Todd. So I, I clearly I read things completely wrong last week. And maybe there were some things that were cut out last week on the show. But like Bronwyn is really, really mad at Todd. It's pretty obvious he, she is. And so she's mixing it with like dark humor. and But it's not the same dark humor as what she normally does. It's like something else. Where like she really is just like, yeah, we're together for 10 years. So I'm not sure if they're happily together. And child, that mid-season trailer, it comes up, but it does not come up from the person it should come up from. I'm just saying. Subtle hints there. But anyway. So then um, as we're seeing this unfold and they're doing this, Everyone's just kind of sitting there awkwardly like, hmm, hmm, because it really was awkward. Um, it didn't come off as like terms of endearment. It came off as I am mad at you and we're in this marriage because I to we tolerate each other and that's it. It's convenient for both of us. It, so I don't know. I don't want to put that out there. I hope that's not what it is, but... We got more to watch when it comes to Bronwyn. And side note, I'm going to say right now, Bronwyn needs first chair. Period. She is carrying this show on her back. I never thought that someone could top Monica Garcia Delgado, um, Jesse Smollett lady. <laughs> I didn't know anyone could. And, and shout out to Kim Pyre. I totally got that from Kim Pyre. Um, Great reviewer if you want to watch other people who review Housewife shows. But anyway, I did not think there would be anyone that could carry a show the way she did. And Bronwyn is carrying the show. And the only difference is her, um, she has the coins too. And more coins than the rest of these ladies. Just saying. Anyway, so from there, somehow an argument breaks out about oh i know what happens here so from there they actually decide um i think it was um angie who decided to do a newlywed game so she brings a game and of course we know with these housewives games are shady's all get out and so when they go to do this and play this household play this housewives game the newlyweds 
At first, it starts off pretty light, but then it gets into the TMIs of it all, and then from the TMIs of it all. So it starts with um, who apologizes between the two of them type situation, something light like that. And then from there, then it goes to, um, it goes to favorite, favorite sex positions. And that's where we got TMI. And then from there, then of course we had to have a shady question of who does your spouse not like at this table that can't be the partner. And that's where the party got started. And so it got back to everyone kind of getting at Lisa again. And really, side note, it was Lisa, it was like basically only one person had Whitney on there or two people had Whitney and everyone else pretty much had Meredith and Lisa. And I don't know what they think they're doing and I ain't gonna hold you because I think I ain't gonna hold you. I think part of it is Whit, um, not Whitney, but like Lisa, Meredith, and Heather, I think they think their OG status is enough to keep them on the show. And the way these housewives shows have been shaking up, honey, no. Really the only one at this point, and I know I'm skipping ahead here and skipping around, but bear, bear, bear with me, we'll get back to it. I mean, Meredith can go and so can Heather. And really, Whitney, I want Whitney to stay because I do like Whitney and um, Angie's friendship. I like it. I, I ain't gonna hold you. I kind of liked it last season, to be honest, even though I don't really care for Whitney. But I like their dynamic. Um, and outside of when Whitney's not being messy, she does seem like she's a genuine good friend. And again, I do love this kind of bond that's happening and seems like it's really happening between um angie bronwyn and um whitney and so I, I am liking that i will just say that so anyway but back to it they get back to talking to lisa and what we did not expect but happened justin actually did apologize to lisa and Lisa apologized back. And the apologies were actually correct. So, cause Justin apologized for the way he came back at Lisa. And Lisa's like, I'm sorry I even came to you on that kind of energy. But one thing that I'm gonna give her a little something, but then I'm taking it away. Because she would, honestly, that apology would not happen if Justin would not apologize first. And I know that for a fact. It was very clear as mud that she was not going to apologize without um, Justin apologizing first. And that is not how apologies work, Lisa. So, yeah. <laughs> I I'm kind of still like, girl, you, you really are in your own way when it comes to all of this. And you're creating more drama than even necessary. It's team too much. It's, kind it's actually kind of unbearable. And... I know it is bringing the drama on the show, but like, I don't know. <laughs> cause I, I, I get it's working cause it is bringing stuff, but at the same time, it's like, I feel like there's just moments where you could like put, you know, pull back a little bit. You don't have to do this all the time because it's, I don't know. Anyway, so from there, then it moves from that to, by the way, Bronwyn still ain't getting no apology yet. Side note. <laughs> and she was the one who was literally offended at her own event and vacation and everything. Still getting, didn't get an apology yet. And so, but the, but then it goes from that to... I'm trying to remember who... It, oh, child. Meredith then makes it a point to say, hey, I am upset with you, um... Angie's husband of like what you said, like she brings back the, she brings back the Brooks thing. And I got some thoughts on that too. And I love that the, I love that Angie's husband actually did call her out and said like, look, this is my major pet peeve. 
we were talking about it at the at the party um at the um ready renewal party um and you could we could have squashed it then and there but instead you came you came across like everything was okay and now we're back to this again we're regurgitating something that you're upset with yet again and i'm gonna hold you i agree with what he's saying now where he's wrong is he did totally said what he said but was it offensive to brooke brooks no and you want to know why i feel that way because meredith i'm so sick of you acting like your son is like 10. he is a whole ass adult and he puts himself in grown people's business once you're an adult i don't care if you're like a kid in the show if you're an adult and you putting yourself in grown people's business you get grown people's consequences period and honestly brooks is unbearable i can't stand him i'm, I'm sorry like i don't i don't love him <laughs> So I don't feel the way that anything was said. And honestly, too, I think he was right what he said. Um, oh, side note. Um, <laughs> side note. So, okay. I'm actually rewatching the show right now just to see if I'm missing anything. And it's at the volleyball scene. And right when I turned, Angie's husband with his shirt off was looking like a snack. Girl, you did good for yourself. I ain't going to hold you. Y'all are a beautiful couple. I will say that. I was like, what? Oh, <laughs> back to him though. Cause I literally was just talking about him. Um, yeah, he doubled down, tripled down. He did not give her apology. I was like, yeah, stand in it. Cause he's like, I don't understand why I would be giving you an apology for what? I stand in what I said. I feel like you, um, it was like, I really feel like you, um, did do that. And I think and the thing is she did. And I can't stand when people try and make you apologize for something and gaslight you to apologizing. Because what the reason why he said what he said, I think that's the other thing that's lost, is because maybe, like, I really think that Monica and Meredith did try to push that that narrative about Angie's husband, about him being family. And for those of you, know, if you know, you know, cause I'm family too. I'm part of the, I'm part of the community. Um, yeah, I think that, that will hurt his business really, honestly. And cause I mean, you're also accusing him of infidelity and, um, she's the one who, who brought, brought this up. Meredith brought this up and then Monica, add, Monica added extra sauce to it. But at the end of the day, y'all did that together. Y'all brought that one to the screen. And so, sorry, he's right when he said. So I'm glad he didn't give her an apology. And so she's back on like, huh. And then like, as this is happening, um, Whitney does have, um, you know, Whit both Whitney and Angie have, you know, Angie's husband's back. It's like, well, show the receipts if that's what happened. Show the receipts. And then Seth out of nowhere brings up this reality TV blog, blog thing. And he's like, proof, biatch. And Winnie and I had the same reaction. I am not going to hold you. Winnie was like, it would take everything in me to not jump off across the table and punch you in the face. And I felt the same way with that. And number two is Seth. What's up with that black scent? I felt, I felt a different way. Whitney didn't catch it, but I did. What was up with the black scent? And actually, Justin called it out a little bit later on the episode. He's like, it's bitch, not biatch. Like, why are you saying it like that? Exactly. Why are you saying it like that, Seth? And also, too, what are you doing calling people that you aren't really familiar or close with a bitch anyway? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> come come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Because I feel like I need to say this. Um, because this has happened to me before. Side note. Um, when it comes to my... Actually, I'm going to put it out here. My ex-roommate's um, current um, baby daddy, wherever he is, uh, he did that to me. 
He called me a biatch in my house and thought I was going to be okay with that. I was like, no. <laughs> now, I did not kick him out of my house, even though I should have. But I was very offended at it, and I checked him right away. And I was like, yo, that's not what we're going to do. And I don't know who raised some of y'all, but in what world is that okay to call someone that you are not familiar with like that? Y'all are not close like that. You don't know them like that to call a woman out of their name. I'm just wanting to know that <laughs> because... I ain't gonna hold you. See, that thing, it sent me back a little bit. I was like, wait, what? Anyway. So from there, um, so pretty much back to what I said though. Um, Angie's husband doubled down. He's like, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not apologizing for, for nothing. I'm not doing that. And then from there, um, I'm trying to remember what happened after that. I think. I think after that, then they did find a way to talk things out. Um, oh, because Meredith still won the apology. She didn't get the apology. And um, I'm trying to remember, did anything else happen after that? I think after that was pretty much the, that was over with. And then we skipped over to the next scene. But unbeknownst to us, I kind of wish we would have saw this. Because I love it when the Salt Lake City girls like party afterwards. Um, we actually find out, even though the way the scene ended on our side, it ended kind of tense. What actually ended up happening was everyone actually ended up partying and having a good time, especially the girls. And they're just like, I don't know if it was exhaustion or what it was, but we actually ended up having a very, very lovely time after all that happened. I was just like, I, I kind of wish they would capture that. They did. They showed a flashback of it and they did seem like they were having a good time. But anyway, it was the next day, because I don't think anything else notable will happen after that. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Pause, pause, pause. I almost forgot. The major notable thing that happened, which was wild to me, was Angie tries to sit, change the subject, and she brings up um, Gwen, you know, um, Bronwyn's daughter, meeting her dad's side of the family. And immediately, Todd shuts it down. He is shut down. He's like, we're not going to talk about this. We're not doing this here. But like in his very stern, old man kind of way. And Bronwyn's still trying to explain things because she's like, yo, I'm doing my job. We still, I still have to talk about this a little bit. And she tries to talk about her feelings and all this with it. And Todd is making a point to like, no, she's not meeting them. We're not doing this this way. She's not meeting them. Like putting his foot down as if she, he has a say in whether the daughter can make her decision or not. And this is where I, I don't like Todd anymore. I am done with Todd. I am done. That dynamic is toxic and not okay. Um, it is not, and I kind of was sighing it before because the age difference and with age difference and with people of a certain age and certain wealth, you gotta be, you gotta keep an eye on that. So, but this pretty much confirmed it for me. It was like, wow. And everyone was just kind of like, oh, Oh, and Angie was actually truly remorseful. She didn't realize that she put her foot in her mouth. And Bronwyn even kind of went outside herself. She's like, Lisa, 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 it's not a you thing. I have no problem with you on how you did all this. But Todd's like, well, I do. You, it should have been none of your business. Because so in, in the confessional, he's really saying how he feels. He's like, I don't like any of this. I don't like that Lisa decided to put her business into this. This is really none of these people's business. We shouldn't be talking about this at a dinner table, this, that, and this, and that. And I'm just like, I get that, but this is a reality TV show where you actually have to show your lives. And Bronwyn knows that. She's aware of it. But I think this is where the age gap is age gapping and not in a good way. And he came off as like her dad scolding her. And she, Bronwyn, who was like the most lively, 
powerhouse kind of character person shrunk down to a little girl in front of everyone. And I hate it for her. And so after that, I'm like, oh no, I don't see it for you at all, Todd. What is that? And clearly, this is not going to be the last time that this is brought up, their dynamic and how it's like not okay, really. Um, you, It just kind of makes you think when at the beginning when she was joking about the sugar day and all that, she was doing it. I think she was doing it as a masking and kind of like a, you know, like a way of saying, yeah, everything's good. And not all, not all that glitters is gold. And it's clear to me that it does, it, that that's what it is. But anyway, that's where that ended, actually. And let's go on to the next day. But like, um, before we go on to the next day, I want to know in the comments how you feel about Todd. Um, I, did not expect it to get worse. And even Bronwyn in her confessional, she calls out, she's like, I thought some of the ladies were going to embarrass me. I didn't think my husband was going to be the one who embarrasses me. And I was like, yeah, he embarrassed you. And I'm just wondering where does the power dynamic become equal? And maybe she just, because she's a little bit more aware of the cameras and cares a little bit more than he does clearly, Maybe after they went to their separate corners, she actually expressed, you know, kind of got them together because she has a mouth on her. She could do that. But at the same time, I kind of don't see it based off that power dynamic. I don't know. And it's clear to me that I don't think Bronwyn financially need the show, but I think she need the show to get her independence and maybe even come up with a plan to get up out of there. I don't know. I'm not... Tr sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm not trying to think the worst. But... Okay, guys. Let me be honest. My perspective is... I'm a single girl. And I'm that for a reason. And one of the main reasons why I'm that for a reason... Is... That whole thing that Todd did right there... Oh, no one could ever. No one. And I mean no one. That's just me, though. Like, you ain't gonna talk to me like you're crazy and don't think I'm gonna mouth back or nothing. That's just what it is for me. But anyway, I need to know y'all thoughts on that. That was pretty crazy and pretty notable. Um, but then the next next day, things still there's still some things that happen. Because again, this was... <laughs> Uh, over an hour and 15 minute episode. Um, and this is not including, I mean, this is including the commercials, of course, but like it was a supersized episode. But anyway, let me go on. So it's the next day and they are, um, going to the, um, Indy car thing and, um, they are VIP. VIP. They meet one of the race car drivers. Um, they get to be right at the pit. Like they're getting the treatment and, what I will say, and this is one thing, I hate to compare housewife shows, but this is why when it comes to Potomac, I just really wish Potomac wasn't so low budget in comparison. Because I'm like, these Salt Lake City girls are doing what they need to do. And ironically, when it comes to the past two episodes, I'm not sure if this was on Bravo's money. I think this was on Todd and Bronwyn's money and Bravo maybe gave him a little bit of per diem. Yeah, their money's long. The guy who had been Palm Pilot and now does hedge funds, the money's going to be long. I'm just saying. But anyway. Um, so from there, we then um, were there. We're there. They're having a good time. Bronwyn tries to talk to Lisa again to finish the conversation that they never finished. They still did not finish the conversation because they couldn't because literally... The cars are literally speeding right by them. Like, there's no, there's no way. And so she's like, okay, let's have a one-on-one -on -one later on and talk it out. So fast forward, they get back from the event. Lisa and Bronwyn finally have to talk. And Bronwyn, honestly, she under she sees it for what it is. Lisa's your surface friend. She's not your friend. That's what she found out. And um, because 
Lisa is still so clueless and tripling down on trying to be on both sides, but she's really not on both sides. She's biased to Heather. And she, the thing that bothers me about it is it's similar to what Angie said when she was talking to Heather about Lisa. And I feel the same way. If you're biased, just stand it and say you're biased instead of trying to play it wrong and do all this other stuff. Because Bronwyn, she's like, I'm a wordsmith and you're saying a whole bunch of nothing. And that tells me everything I need to know. And she's like, let's get, okay, let's, because what we find out from Bronwyn is not necessarily the Heather situation. It's the words that Heather said. And does Lisa believe it? Do you believe I'm two-faced? Do you believe I'm mad? She's like, get Heather out of the equation. I want to know how do you, Lisa Barlow, feel about me? Pretend she doesn't exist and just the rumors are out there about what she's accusing me of. But again, pretend she doesn't exist. And I was like, the sad thing is, I feel like Bronwyn literally had to break it down like that for Lisa to get it. And she still was trying to like make it about Heather and like Bronwyn's like, girl, I'm not trying to make it about Heather. And if I have, if I want to resolve things with Heather, I will do it with Heather. I don't need a mediator to do that because I'm a freaking adult. <laughs> like, I just, I was frustrated for Bronwyn. I'm going to hold you. And for those who haven't figured out, Bronwyn is kind of my favorite. And like, yeah, I know in my comments, I see some of y'all feel like she's over the top. Well, maybe y'all can't be my friend either because I'm over the top too. I'm just... <laughs> um, Because I feel seeing when it comes to Bronwyn and her personality because I am a little extra and over the top as well. I'm not always like that, but for this type of show, it needs to be you t um, turned up. And clearly that is Bronwyn turned up because when it comes to all these ladies... And I hope y'all just, like, just be so for real. When it comes to all these shows, none of these people act like that in real life every day. That's just their personality turned up. Now, for those who don't got personality who need to go, I don't know what to say about them. Maybe they don't need to be on the show. But when it comes to, like, larger-than-life personalities that are on this show, yeah. This is what you're going to get. I don't understand why you're confused by that. Anyway, so <sighs> Bronwyn manages to get a little bit of apology out of her, but it's not enough for her. She's so she she sees her. Um, but they it's enough to just like move on. And so then fast forward, um, the ladies are all just celebrating each other. They're like at the pool and just you know, having a good time turning up and, um, for, and this is just the evening. We don't see the guys as much anymore. Thank God, because I'm so, uh, I, I don't, I don't want the husbands to get this involved again. Um, oh, also side note. So I forgot to mention, we do have a little bit of a scene where it is Angie's husband, Angie. Um, I feel bad because I keep forgetting his name. I think it is Steve. Um, but, um, Justin and Whitney, they're talking about how Seth's behavior was really weird in that pocket, kind of what I mentioned before. Um, and, um, yeah, I agree. It wasn't okay. It was weird. Um, and they were just like, and I love that even like Justin, his confession was like, Hasn't he learned that the husband should not be getting involved in women's dramas? Oh yeah, he wasn't at the um he wasn't at the event before. And I was like <laughs> And then as this is happening, um so at, while this is happening, Seth is leaving. Because Seth still does need to work and he's like look, he's so chipper and ready to get out of there. It's so obvious he's ready to get out of there. And that relationship is still really, really weird, really odd. I don't necessarily believe the relationship all the way. And I don't know. It so I have questions. <laughs> For those who watched my last review, you understand why I said I have questions. But I have questions because just uh, something's a little funny about that. But anyway. So 
the ladies were like just celebrating, having a good time um, in the pool. So that was good. And then the next day, um, the ladies are leaving, getting ready to leave. Um, nothing really noble happens other than, again, Seth leaving and then Meredith mentioning, okay, so it's not like he's going back home. He's going to Columbus. So apparently this is like her other storyline about them not spending time with each other. But again, I just have trouble really believing it because I don't know. They're just such an odd couple. I don't get it. <laughs> um, but I get where Brooks get his obnoxiousness from. And it's not cute. Anyway, um, so moving on. <laughs> I can't help it. I'm shady sometimes. So anyway, so... Um, the ladies are all, everyone's, not just the ladies, but everyone's, this is the last day, everyone's leaving now. And mostly everyone's going to be flying coach. Um, Bronwyn, her husband, and I think another couple, they're flying first class. And then everyone else, they try to give them as close as seats as possible. Um, and Lisa, again, is making it about her and throwing a whole entire fit about having to fly coach. And it wasn't really even, and, and this is what gets me about it. Is Lisa paying for any of this? No. Number two, it was explained more than once. The first class seats were, they, they didn't have any more. So there was like really no other choice other than for them to fl fly the private jet back. And for you to have acted a fool this whole entire way and the whole entire time on this trip, you think you deserve to be on, on a private plane back? Absolutely not. And the gag was, and what I loved about it was, I don't know, Bronwyn, I don't know if you did that on purpose or not. Her seats were all the way in the back of the plane. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I ain't gonna hold you though. After you tried to sabotage your crap on my trip, you better be happy that I even brought you a plane ticket back. Hello. Anyway, so then from there, um, because Lisa's throwing a whole entire fit, making it all about her, doing a whole entire thing. And um, she's making herself look bad, by the way. Because at first she's talking about, I can't wait to get back to Henry. But then from there, she's like, well, let's just go to LA instead and then come back that way so we could just make sure we're flying first class. Henry will be okay. And I'm just like, for someone who's so subconscious about being perceived as a good parent, that did not, girl, the self-awareness is just lacking, and I, I just cannot. But anyway, so that was where the episode pretty much concluded. I'm trying to think what else happened there um, outside of Lisa throwing a whole entire fit and just being really, really annoying. Um, yeah, I think that was pretty much it. And Bronwyn was nice for even, like, in, like buying her anything back. I really just wouldn't have. I, I'm like... I don't know. But it's clear that the Lisa and Bronwyn thing is not over. They're not really okay. They just put a Band-Aid on it. Um, but, like, it's a flesh wound <laughs> at this point. Um, and because also, too, side note, in the confessional, when Lisa was trying to, like, you know, explain her case of why... She's trying to be in the middle. In her confessional, she basically does state that she feels like Bronwyn's two-faced. So I'm like, so if you feel that, that she is two-faced, you should not have came on this trip. That's really messed up. What in the spoiled? I don't know. And even, and Bronwyn was spot on at that scene when she was talking about it. I, I'm sorry to go back to it, but I, I missed a couple things there. Um, the other thing she said was kind of spot on was like, you know, when someone doesn't say, what someone doesn't say says a lot. And Bronwyn, that's a word. That's a word. As someone who has, and I'm talking about me, of course, 
<laughs> not me being Lisa Barlow, my own channel. Oh yeah, it's my channel. I could do that. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I identify with this just because I myself also had a friendship breakup. Um, well, friendships, plural, breakups um, between 2020 to like, I want to say 2023, just friendship breakups. And, you know, it sucks, but at the same time, part of me looks back, I'm like, there, the signs were there and I just like ignored it. And moving forward, that is one of those learning lessons that I've come up with where I'm just like, if I see that there's a sign that something is a little funny in the light and like the transparency ain't really being transparent and you're a little too much invested in my business, especially when it's not so positive, I got to look at you a certain way. And one of my friends or former friends, it definitely was that. It seemed like she latched on to me when I wasn't doing so well. And you always have to look out for people who are like that. And I've actually had a couple of times where that's happened. It's manifested itself in different ways. Even um, one of the establishments I was going to a lot. I stopped going to that establishment as much because I felt that I felt that energy when it came to some of the people there. You know, when people are not happy, they want to take light away from people who are. Or any little bit of light or sunshine that you might have as a person, they're going to try to drain that from you. And I'm aware of that more than ever that that's a thing. But like, I hope Bronwyn, you know, knows that too. And you just have to just, you got to stand on business. And in some ways you got to move in silence. And anytime you feel someone's energy is kind of off, you can entertain it a little bit, but don't give them what they want. Never give people like that what they want. Um, and, you know, one thing that I've said multiple times, especially this year, because this happened, people have tried it still. People keep trying it with me. But one thing about me, and hopefully, you know, when you get, when you're just a more evolved person and know yourself, Nobody can dim my light. And it, if it requires a friendship breakup, honestly, sometimes when it's a friendship breakup, that person wasn't even your friend to begin with. So is it really that big of a deal once you realize that that's not even your friend? That is your enemy that was plotting and pretending to be your friend this whole entire time? Your enemies and friends sometimes look a lot alike. I'm just saying. Anyway, I know I'm going on a whole entire spiel, but it's true. It is true. And one thing about these housewife shows and reality shows, it is kind of like a case study on how people are in your life in real life. It's just sometimes a more elevated version of it, but child, the story be the story. It still be the same thing. But anyway, I went on a whole entire soapbox and that was a word at the end because Bronwyn gave a word, so I'm giving a word. But anyway, y'all already know I'm team Bronwyn over here. Um, so far, you know what? I lie. I'm not team Bronwyn. I'm team me, but she's my favorite on this show so far. And we look like we're in for a treat come the rest of the season. That mid season trailer, honey, looked good. Um, so hopefully you stick around with me, watch more of the show with me and we will get through this thing. And anyway, that does conclude the video. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.